to and the way uh, of the civil society organizations and the sector. In the good old days, most of the history has been achieved, particularly in, 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 in Europe or in America or in the Middle East or in Asia by the endowment, which were created by the citizens of the country, not by the state of the country, by the citizens, which they contributed donation of lands, other assets, money, everything, because they love to serve their own country and their own nation. So, really, my advice to security, to intelligence, to other state institutions is to encourage the growth of the civil society sector because it is one of the main protectors of the country beside the security and beside the military. And I have developed something called ARM. ARM is the civil society sector, A-R-M. A stands for allow never to prevent. Facilitate, allow, A, allow. R stands for regulate. The government has the right to regulate every registered charity. For instance, M stands for monitor. Never in the philosophy of thinking of protecting a country is to cripple civil society organization. You cripple the nation. You destroy the country. Allow, regulate, and monitor. And if they are wrong, you close them down or put a penalty on them. This is the philosophy of thinking of how we look about how we look at the value of the sector. Maybe somebody can say, we have a lot of humanitarian organizations raising a lot of millions of pounds. Yes, humanitarian organizations are a part of civil society sector. They are not the civil society sector. In the civil society sector, there are the union, there are the syndicates, there are the initiatives, there are the non-profit uh, organization, they are the human rights organization, they are the research centers, they are the think tank, they are, there are a lot, a lot, a lot, not only humanitarian, but, but we succeeded. We succeeded in creating a humanitarian movement because it's based on emotion. There is a famine in uh, Somalia, Cholera in Yemen, conflict in South Sudan or DRC, conflict in Myanmar, siege in Gaza, conflict and displacement and refugees in Syria. Everybody say, give, 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 give. Emotional. Emotional, which is fine. We need it. But what we need nowadays is to build the sector which is to make a social movement to create a social movement based on bring it back please on this one based on these wires very tedious work very meticulous work to cement the social fabric of the society to strengthen the foundation of the country and to build the renaissance of the country because without the wire and the ball you are in a deep water and you could be very vulnerable okay so now we look at the body of the for the medics they understand what all the essential organs of the body represent the value of the civil surgery and nobody can live without them uh, definition of civil society organization, it is a society of individuals made by the citizens, the, the, the citizens of the country, the civilians of the country, not the uh, 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 military and uh, 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 security because they have a different role to protect the civil society organization. Their role is to protect, actually, the civil society sector. Next one, please. Uh, again, it's all the organizations, let me say, unions, 
يعني it is has a cross cutting cross cutting of every action in the function of the society in the country that you need whether it's in agriculture, it's in art, it's in drama, it's cinema, it's in sport, uh, it's in industry, uh, it's in water and sanitation, road, uh, what else you talk about, uh, uh, it's, it's rights of people, rights, uh, rights of people as well, uh, climate, uh, heritage, uh, history, uh, uh, when we talk about the the, the, the treasure of the country, the resources, all this is cross-cutting to find somebody in the country, a citizen or a group of citizens in the country are interested in climate change, are interested in preservation, are interested in agriculture, are interested in history, are interested in building roads. Are interested in so this is when you allow the millions of the citizens of the, the, the country to contribute, to reflect their civility uh, and contribution to build their own country. The role of the civilian in building his or her own country and the renaissance, making the renaissance or creating the renaissance of uh, the country to become one of the leading countries. Uh, an aim, the aim is to improve the lives, not only of a human being, to improve the climate, to improve the lives for animals, and birds, and so on, to improve the services, and all this will serve the quality of life of man and woman who are living in such a country. I'm saying this to us in English, why? I know that most of you are living in the, 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 the Western Hemisphere, where this for you could be a, a piece of cake, but some non-Arabic speaking living in somewhere else, might need this information. But actually reminding, remind people, so the reminder will help people. A component, مكونات اللي بنتكلم عنها What is this? The components of every individual who are trying to build the sector. Every individual, every creation of Allah. Some missing creation might be very essential for building a part of the society that we want to create. Next one. The values of civil society organization. It is ethical and we know it. Okay? It's all ethical and moral values. Justice, equality, respect, morality, and uh, accommodating inclusiveness, transparency. All this is a part of the values of civil society sector. Uh, each of civil society organizations the specification of civil society organization top on the agenda is respect. Especially when you are a part of the majority and you have a small minority communities living in a marginalized societies. Have to respect their opinion, their culture, everything. Uh, the second one is the power. Okay, the influence of, of, of the society, so the societal influence. Third one, it, it has structure. Some society organizations must have a structure, hierarchy, into it. It is very quick to respond to anything. And it reaches the disaster area, we call it the first responder. The first responder and disaster born area are the local area, the local organization, the local neighborhood, this actually respond to the disaster before the government started to give the decision from the capital and send the aid to the periphery. It is non-profitable. Okay, it's non-profitable as well. So, and it has a clear aim and objective, which is actually to serve 
the society to serve the country and the nation and it has its independence actually its work independently guided by the local law of the government As I said before, it forecasts, that actually it predicts if there's any disaster going to happen in one area and report it back to the government and it creates a, 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 a culture of philosophy to fight back depression, isolation, extremism and uh, uh, radicalism and the last one is terrorism. They are, they know better before the government that those individuals in such area could be radical and they can treat them actually on a, or, or for, according to the civil liberty law, not according to the security and the military law. The role of civil society organizations, many, 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 one of which, the top one, is the public interest. Public interest is the priority. Public interest is the priority. It's not an organization interest. It's not a political party interest. It's not an individual interest. Huh? It's not a group interest. It's not a, a religious interest. It is public interest, which includes every religion, which includes every culture, which includes every group in the country. Benefiting from human resources. Okay? Benefiting because they have to empower the human resources, the individuals, and through the voluntary activity, respecting the dignity of everyone in the, in the society, and it becomes like the free platform when everybody can uh, uh, air their dreams and how to build or how to help their own country. The second thing, actually, to include youth and women in the decision making process number seven it is actually talking about the safety and achieve the social peace and safety of the society uh, protect and defend the society and the nation inside and outside in the international conferences and both this kind of vision vision for the future of the country itself and the nation because each citizen has the right to dream and each citizen has the right to translate his or her dream into action to help his society his or her neighborhood and their country what affects the development of civil society organization okay accountability Accountability is a big name, huge name. They are accountable to any civil society organization is accountable to the creator, accountable to the government, accountable to the donor, accountable to the people who are benefiting from it, accountable to the public, accountable to any criticism. So accountability is extremely important. Transparency. We have to be extremely transparent, especially when we make a decision how to spend money here and not to spend money there. Actually, also the, 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 the freedom space provided to the civil society sector by the government. The more you provide a freedom space to the civil society sector, the more initiative, the more innovation, the more value-driven, uh, need-driven, uh, projects and products will be produced by every citizen in the country. The less freedom you give to society, the less you have of this contribution from civil society organization and the more extremism and radical feeling you'll have from the citizen of the country. What are the problems which are affecting uh, uh, a civil society organization? First one is lack of professional uh, human resources which can join. Some of them said uh, this kind of organization, whether humanitarian or social or others, 
don't give much money, so I go to work in business. This is number one. Number two, the philosophy of the culture of uh, individualism. Everything should be related to the founder, to the chairman, to the leader, which is wrong. This is a killer. Uh, one of the um, problems also, the lack of transparency and the lack of uh, regulation inside the organization and principles. Another one is uh, the un... The, 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 Random. Yeah? Random. Random making decision or uh, uh, quick the action decision. The actionary become very actionary. Okay? And uh, uh, to, to, to stay in power for as long as I stay, maybe 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Another one is to mix up with uh, between a humanitarian, political, and religion uh, 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 objectives, uh, uh, failing to create and build partnership, and lack of participation of women and youth in the uh, leadership of such society. And here, if we stop, if we stop at the woman, you see, if you look at the Muslim in the East, particularly in the Middle East and the Arab countries, it is, uh, it is the Ummah, which is majority of Muslims, where we used to see the great role of the first woman who accepted Islam more than 1438 years ago, was actually supporting and leading and financing and advocating for the Prophet. Nowadays, in the 21st century, we use the woman as a tool or as an image, actually like a PR image, but not really a valuable, a valuable individual that can lead the society. Some of these problems actually come from the laws, which is actually the crippling laws by the governments, and one of the, another problem is actually the lack of uh, uh, budgets and planning and all these sort of things. So this kind of problem is happening, but that does not mean we stop or fight or remove civil society sector. We have to improve it, actually, by investing in it. Uh, uh, it, it you start uh, an organization with no clear objective. Okay? Uh, you contradict the culture of the host country or the local community. Uh, Sometimes the, 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 the uh, funding could come from different sources which can lead to uh, uh, fight on the source of funding and fight on how to spend the funding. Uh, some of the organization could have a different agenda to uh, uh, create conflicts. This also some of the uh, caution which you have to do it. And depending on the donor, not becoming taken initiatives or, or actually to the foreign donors especially, uh, which this can, 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 can cripple our organization, uh, the, 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 the driven agenda from outside, which might contradict the government policy, uh, the, the religious institution, which are forcing people to change their, 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 their religions and become very selective in uh, uh, choosing whom we help. Coming back to conclude, um, I did not talk really about civil society in depth, because if we're going to talk about civil society in depth, I have got a very long uh, presentation, very long presentation, it might, it might not end in 20 minutes or 30 minutes, it might take one and a half hour to go through all the different kinds of functions and benefits that civil society is. If we can come back to the first two slides, please. I keep saying, now, civil society sector is the first one. The first one. The first one. It is the missing obligation. Al Farid al Ghaiba. Renewal of deen means in the good old days, the alim by himself in a flat layer or one layer society was the one who would be able to renew the religion. But now we have to protect this alim by creating an organization to protect his or her opinion. Because now we are living in the era of uh, 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 society sector or uh, organizational era 
our institutional era. In the good old days, the alim was the institution himself or herself. Nowadays, when we say it renews the life, it renews the religion, yes, as an institution of ulama. This ulama could be scientific ulama or religious ulama. Okay? So the second one, look at this one. How effective this little role, the small role, is done by every small organization or initiative to protect the country from the illness which can affect it as a virus, ideological virus, to fragment the country. What we see nowadays in Iraq, in Syria, some of it which is because these two countries did not have several society sectors. Same in Libya, did not have several society sectors. So the system or the regime in these three countries did not allow the growth of several society sectors because they were so scared. That's why it's become fragmented now. And the conflict is actually costing or claiming the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and claiming the displacement of at least 15, 16, 17 million people in just three countries, Libya, Iraq, and uh, Syria. I would like to thank you for being very patient, but my final statement is for the young people, and instead of wasting your time, actually on Facebook, social media, make an initiative. Keep making initiative, keep making initiative, Keep taking initiatives, even if you fail a hundred times. Don't stop. Once you succeed, you'll become the leader of the society and one of the people who can protect not only your society, but humanity as well. Jazakumullah khair. Ramadan Mubarak alaykum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.